Hello and welcome to another video of Breaking Bad English with me David. In this video I'm going to talk to you and help you go through and hopefully pass the Language Cert C1 level speaking exam. Now the C1 level is called the expert level and it is not a straightforward speaking exam, it is quite difficult. And previously in my videos I have spoken about the different levels in English for exams and this one is the C1 level. So it is a high level and a good level of uh, vocabulary and grammar is expected by all the students in order to pass the exam. So I'm using for this exam the Language Cert practice paper which you can find online from the Language Cert website and it is the practice paper number three for Language Cert Expert C1 International ESOL Speaking Practice Paper 3. So you can look that up. I'll put the link below this video and you can see it. Now one thing I would recommend, watch all of this video right until the end. It's very important that you do because there are a lot of tips in this. So, um, some comments first of all. The ESOL and CELT exam are in fact the same according to the Language Cert website. I have been an interlocutor for Language Cert for more than 12 years and I am very experienced in speaking to students when they take the exam. Um, what else should I say? Uh, yes, if you don't understand something in the exam, ask the interlocutor to repeat it. Okay, he is allowed to repeat a question if you find it difficult and you don't understand it the first time. Okay, speak at a reasonably fast speed because this is C1 level. The time for this exam in total, it has a duration of 15 minutes. So 15 minutes is the target time for the exam. So the exam begins something like this. Language Cert, International ESOL Speaking Test, Expert Level, 21st of March 2022. Then I give the candidate's name. So, for example, I could say a name like Arnav Patel. Exam begins. Hello, my name is David Crofts. Can you spell your family name for me, please? And the candidate will say his family name. He will say P-A-T-E-L. And I say, thank you. Where are you from? And he then says, for example, I am from Mumbai, which is a large city on the western coast of India. Thank you. Now part one. I'm going to ask you some questions about yourself and your ideas. The first topic is the home. Tell me what you like about your home. Now, now it's up to him to say something and he can say many things, but he should say something like, well, um, my favorite place in my home is my kitchen because I recently fitted a new kitchen and it looks very, very nice. And I believe that there is no place like home. So having a nice home is very, very important to me. I try to do as much work on my home as I can and when I have money available. Thank you very much. Next topic, feelings. What makes you angry? Now, that's quite a difficult question, but you've got to think uh, quickly about that. And you might say, well, the thing that makes me really furious is when people push in, in queues. Uh, I can't stand it when I have been standing for a long time in the queue and another person comes along and tries to push in at the front of the queue. That makes me really, really frustrated and I can't help but say something to that person. Okay, enough. 
And that was the second topic. Now, you will have up to maybe three, four or five questions in this section, depending on how long your answers are. If you give long answers, then they won't ask you so many questions. It's in your own hands. But try to give full, comprehensive answers to all of the questions. Okay, that's important. Really, really important, in fact. Now, in part two of the exam, uh, we are going to role play some situations. So role play means that you are one person, I'm another person, the situation is given to us and we have to be actors basically. So you have to start or respond as necessary. So the interlocutor reads the situation to you and he says, for example, I start or you start. Okay, the first situation I'm your friend and I start, I get really nervous before exams, have you got any tips for me? Now it's your go, you've got to say something quickly and you've got to react. Say something like, firstly I strongly recommend that you get a good night's sleep before an exam and make sure that you do some deep breathing exercises before you go into the exam room. And you then respond and say, thanks, that's a really good idea, I will try that. Have you got any other tips? And I say, well, you could try studying the night before, but not too much. And you say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to really take your advice into account and it will help me prepare for my exam. Okay, so we've spoken two times each then because we are required to speak two times each. Make sure you speak enough. I don't think it's a good idea that the interlocutor speaks more than the student. It has to be equal in the amount of speech given. Okay, that's very, very important to know. If possible, speak more than, than the interlocutor. Hog the actual recording or hog the exam so you do lots and lots of speaking plenty in fact in the second situation and i'll read it to you um we're friends you're moving house you want some help you start now again you've got to start the conversation and you would say something like hi david um I am moving house shortly and I was wondering uh, if it would be possible for you to give me a hand. Now that's a great starting sentence. Give someone a hand. I was wondering if it would be possible. You've got a lot of English in there. But remember, this is C1 level. You should be able to say that. And I would respond with something like, yes, certainly. Can you tell me when you're actually moving? And you respond with something like, Yes, it's going to be next weekend. Uh, I haven't got any transport though. Could you help me out with transport? And I say something like, well, I'm not sure, but I think I have a friend who might have a van available. Now you've got to say something. You say, oh, that would be marvelous. Do you think you could ask him or her? And I'm willing to pay for the time for your driver and for the van, that would be fine. And I say, yeah, yeah, certainly, I'll ask him. Okay. And then we've come to the end. Okay, make sure you get enough conversation in there on your part. Are you using the necessary and, let's say, the correct tenses in the conversation? Are you using a wide range of vocabulary? Are you using conditionals, if possible? So think of all of those things. I know you're under pressure when you take the exam, but these are the things you've got to do at C1 level. Okay, then we come on to the third part. The third part is where we discuss something together. Now, if you look at the actual paper I told you about, which you can download from, from the Language Cert website, you'll see in practice paper three that it's got something called life in front of the screen okay life in front of the screen and we need to discuss something about life in front of the screen so I would say to you in part three something like now let me get it correct 
um, you know, part three. <clears throat> We're going to discuss something together. Here are some ideas. I give you the piece of paper. Here are some views about the effect of technology on our lives. Let's discuss the views and decide which ones we most agree with and which ones we least agree with. Take 20 seconds to think about what you want to say. 20 seconds goes by. You're allowed to make notes if you want, but you've got to think quickly. Right, 20 seconds has gone by, and then you need to start the discussion. So you can go back to the original point of the discussion and say something like, uh, so we need to discuss um, our points of view about life in front of the screen. And we need to say which ones we agree most with and which ones we disagree with. So David, which one do you think you agree with? And I say something like, um, there are no secrets anymore. Technology means the end of privacy. Do you agree with me? And now you respond and say what your opinion is. Now you're going to give maybe a lengthy opinion. At the end of your opinion, you can go on to the next part of it. Look at your piece of paper and say, for example, uh, you can have lots of internet friends and still be very lonely. Do you think that is possible, David? And you throw the ball into my court, let's say, and now I have to react to you. Now, we've got to go around most of these things, so we need to speak quite quickly. Once we've discussed them all, again, I want you to make the summary. So you would say, so having discussed all of these things about life in front of a screen, I think that we most agree with the one which says you can have lots of internet friends and still feel very lonely. And the one we least disagree with is information is not knowledge. Okay, because we have discussed these things and we have come to a conclusion. Now you've got to keep the conversation going here. Ask the interlocutor questions. Listen to re the responses from the interlocutor and then react to the responses, saying whether you agree or disagree. If you disagree, say you disagree, but give the reasons why you disagree. And that will lead to more discussion. Remember, what they're trying to do is, is they're trying to discover your level of English, your ability to have a discussion with another person about a particular topic. So it's up to you to use your skill in English. Okay? So, um, the last part of the exam, well, I'm not going to do the last part. The, the last part, section four, is where you have to talk about a topic on your own. At the C1 level, you're going to speak on your own for about two minutes. And your topic in this uh, sample paper is, for example, the problems and benefits of being famous. Now again, you have a piece of paper and you can write something down. Now write something like the advantages and disadvantages of being famous. All you need to do is write plus and minus on your piece of paper. And write things in the plus common. For example, special treatment on aeroplanes, in restaurants, things like that. Usually uh, famous people earn lots of money, which gives them a very comfortable lifestyle. Make a note of it and uh, write something about the disadvantages, for example, lack of privacy or um, feeling lonely because they are not able to go out into the public and lead a normal life, maybe. Okay, it's up to you. Think about the situation in the past. Do you think it was the same in the past for celebrities being famous when there wasn't so much social media? like YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or whatever it is, Twitter, do you think life was easier in the past for celebrities, for being famous? 
you can talk about that, compare it to life these days, that's going to give you plenty of speaking. And you've only got to speak on your own for two minutes. After you've spoken for about two minutes, I will ask you some follow-up questions. As the interlocutor, I will ask you the questions. So I might ask you something like, um, what would you like to be famous for? And you've got to think quickly. You might say, well, I would really like to be famous for playing or doing a sport really well. Being a world champion in tennis, for example. It's whatever you want. Okay, and that brings you to the end of the exam. Not an easy exam. You've got to use a very wide range of vocabulary. You've got to use all of the tenses that you can. Speak reasonably quickly, not too slowly. Um, if you don't understand a question, as I said before, ask the interlocutor to repeat the question. Try to get some idioms into your speaking, if you can. Have a few idioms well rehearsed before the exam so that you can use them, because many idioms are very flexible. You can use them in different scenarios, different topics, so that's possible. Look at the previous questions in the practice papers from the language cert website because sometimes these types of questions come up again. So if you've practiced these in the past and you get them in the exam, you'll be very well prepared, won't you? Okay, so that's the video. If you have any questions or comments, write them below the video. Go through the video again, particularly before you take the exam. That's very important. Okay, and try and find a friend to read the questions to you in English so that you have the opportunity to practice the answers. Okay, I wish you good luck in your language cert exams and use this video as one of your study tools. So I look forward to seeing you again soon on another video of Breaking Bad English with me, David. Goodbye. Goodbye.